stable prices, easy access to credit, making safe and convenient payments. These are shared concerns of millions of Filipinos. The Banco Central ng Pilipinas and the national government strive to make improvements in these areas toward a new and more resilient economy. I believe Banco Central has done a consistently remarkable job in very challenging times globally. They have kept to a flexible monetary policy, reducing interest rates in a timely and proactive manner to protect economic growth, and increasing interest rates to contain inflationary pressures we needed. The BSP has done a great job in ensuring utmost transparency in its monetary policy in a preemptive and proactive manner, aligned with global best practice. So it doesn't come as a surprise that the BSP of Governor has been awarded as one of the best in the world. This has resulted to a greater order, stability, and certainty in the financial markets and in the economy, also leading to well anchored inflation and inflation expectations. We commend the government, particularly the Department of Finance, in Banco Central ng Pilipinas for effectively using policy measures at its disposal to tame inflation. We laud the BSP for closely monitoring the inflation environment while continuing to ensure that interest rates remain low and loans granted to MSMEs were considered part of the bank's reserve requirements even as we face the challenge of the pandemic. This has given the business community better confidence to move forward as the economy opens and recovers. The national government, through agencies that support and develop agriculture, entrepreneurship, and industry, helps achieve price stability by addressing factors affecting the supply of goods and services. For instance, boosting food production, better policies that enhance logistics, and infrastructure development that speed up delivery of goods and services, as well as monitoring and law enforcement against unfair trade practices. These all help achieve price stability. With a whole-of-government approach to maintaining price stability, there is close coordination between the Banco Central and government line agencies so that appropriate policies, whether for managing demand or supply, are in sync and in place. Ngayon, uh, nakita ko, mas bumaba ang presyo ng bigas ngayon. So, malaking bagay ito para sa aming pamilya. At napakalaking bagay yung pinirmahan na batas ni Duterte na hindi lamang sa pamilya namin makakatulong, naniniwala ako na sa lahat ng pamilyang Pilipino. In addition to liberalizing the rice sector, the Duterte administration has implemented various programs on food security, which helped maintain stability of food prices. The Department of Agriculture launched the Plant, Plant, Plant program otherwise known as the Ahon Lahat, Kain Sapat Contra sa COVID-19. Its main objective is to make food available, accessible, and affordable. We started urban agriculture at the start of 2019. This is in partnership with local government units. We built community gardens nationwide. Beneficiaries learned the basics of food production and we provided seeds and other farming inputs, including technical assistance, training, while LGUs provided the spaces for the gardens and oversaw sustainability of these projects. At the same time, a number of measures were implemented to help maintain price stability amid the COVID-19 pandemic. At the height of the COVID-19 crisis, the country grappled with lack of supply of PPEs gloves, alcohol, and other pandemic essentials. To address the supply deficiency, the Department of Trade and Industry's Board of Investments assisted many manufacturers in repurposing their plants into facilities that produce these highly in-demand products. For instance, ready-to-wear apparel manufacturers or RTW manufacturers turned into PPE manufacturers. Makers of rubber balloons became makers of gloves. Manufacturers of alcoholic beverages became makers of disinfectants, and so on. BOI provided support, such as in the form of technical assistance and linkages with FDA. 
and also linking suppliers and manufacturers. Supporting businesses is a government priority. With various types of assistance to enterprises, government has helped augment the supply of much-needed goods and services, which also helps keep inflation manageable over the medium to long term. Credit access. In recent years, much has been done so that more Filipinos can avail of loans and other financial services more easily. A flagship program that will significantly boost credit access in the country is the Philippine Identification System, or FILSIS, also known as the National ID Program. Banco Central supports FILSIS. We have assumed the role of printing hard copies of the IDs, which also have an electronic version. This program squarely addresses the problem of lack of proper identification. With a national ID, many Filipinos will find it easier to open accounts and avail the services of banks and other formal financial service providers. We expect the country to post more milestones in financial inclusion. Another initiative on improving credit access is the Credit Surety Fund, or CSF. Under this program, funds from state-owned firms, local government units, cooperatives, and other sources are pooled to provide guarantees to loans of micro-enterprises. Um, CSF po ay nakatulong sa amin financially. Nakahiram po kami noong una ng 10 million. Ininvest po namin yun sa additional capital namin. Tapos nag-invest po kami ng bakery, restaurant, at saka additional capital ng groceries namin. As of now, we have 5 million loan. Yun po yung ginamit namin sa pagpatayo ng building namin po sa Pampang. A law seeking to improve credit access was enacted. Under the Personal Property Security Act, properties other than real assets, such as inventories, crops, receivables, may serve as collateral for loans. This helps MSMEs access credit even if they do not own land or other real properties typically required by financial institutions as collateral for loans. Complementing this, the Banco Central has put up a regulatory environment that promotes risk-based lending. Banks are encouraged to rely on a borrower's credit worthiness, determined by using credit scoring models rather than collateral. In December 2020, the Credit Risk Database Project was launched. The Credit Risk Database is a repository of borrowers' information that will help generate credit scores for them. MSMEs that do not have real properties but have good credit scores will be able to access loans. With enabling policies on credit access, microloans have grown over the years, consistent with the goal of financial inclusion and an economy for all. Amid the COVID-19 crisis, there has been a whole-of-government approach in assisting MSMEs through access to financing. While the Banco Central implemented time-bound regulations that encourage banks to lend more to MSMEs, other government agencies rolled out credit programs for small businesses. Throughout the past five years, the government has been very proactive in supporting our MSMEs, which comprise 99% of businesses in the country and employ over 60% of our workforce. We are helping MSMEs prosper for the benefit of the Filipino people and the economy through the CREATE Act, various policy initiatives, enhancing their credit access, and a wide range of financing programs extended by the government. Sending remittances, paying bills, shopping online, transferring funds. Services that make these transactions convenient, fast, and safe are important to Filipinos. In recent years, the ways in which people and businesses make payments have been revolutionized through financial digitalization. Nag-start po ako gumamit noong December dahil marami po ang nagtatanong kung accept po kami na QR code payment. Kasi po, mas mabilis ang pagbabayad at uh, hindi na kailangan mag-sukle. Madami na pong gumagamit ng QR code sa ngayon dahil scan na lang po nila, bayad lang po sila at uh, safe po ang kanilang pagbabayad. Very convenient po siya. The Digital Payments Transformation Roadmap of the Banco Central aims to achieve two overall targets by 2023. Number one, 
half of financial transactions in the country will be done digitally. And number two, at least 70% of Filipino adults will have transaction accounts. The rationale is simple. If payments can be made quickly, capital turnaround is faster and economic growth accelerates. Also, digitalization helps make financial products and services accessible to more people, thereby accelerating financial inclusion. Financial digitalization is promoted in various ways, from regulations that encourage the creation of digital banks and electronic money issuers, to interoperable systems that allow a customer to transfer funds from one bank to another electronically, to innovative programs that allow people to use QR codes for payments and allow people to save and invest for retirement using their mobile devices, to rules that strengthen cybersecurity so that consumers will trust electronic platforms. With all these initiatives, the Philippines is shifting from a cash-heavy to a cash-light and digital-heavy society. From only 1% in 2013, the share of digital financial transactions to total volume rose to over 20% in 2020. And from about 30% a few years back, the number of adult Filipinos with transaction accounts rose to over 50% in 2021. The Philippines is on track to achieving its 2023 goals. Other digitalization milestones have also been recorded. With less physical cash through financial digitalization, which also reduces the country's carbon footprint, we are supporting a more sustainable future. Over the past six years, concrete programs and policies have been put in place to achieve stable prices, improved credit access, and a better payment system, all of which are aimed toward helping realize our collective aspiration, a better quality of life for all Filipinos.